so first up, um, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. Um, things have changed a little bit since we started doing these live streams. The Sunday evening is no longer sort of a lockdown time where no one's got anything to do. So I do appreciate people making the time to rock up for the Sunday evening and um, join us. Or if you're watching this later on, then thank you for, um, for having a bit of a watch later on in the process. Uh, I've been saying this for the last however many weeks, five or six um, via live streams, but um, we're still kind of experimental. This is only the second time that we've done the Zoom um, version of the live stream where Claudia is not co-present with me. Um, so she's zooming in to, uh, to me and then we're live streaming from there. So hopefully all of that works. Seems to be, it wasn't a nightmare setting up. So touch wood, it's all going to be okay. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this work um, was created and on which we're doing, I am present during the live stream. So that's the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation. Um, and I think Claudia is in a different yeah. part of... Yeah, I'm on Darawal land, so I'm coming from... I'd like to acknowledge any... Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land um, and any elders past, present and emerging. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. And um, okay, so for the general live stream structure, it's fairly informal. Um, if you've been watching the, the last few ones, um, it may differ between different projects. But in general, what we're going to do is just go over um, a bit of a demonstration of what we've been working on, talk through some of the ideas that went into that um, set of experiments and studies. Um, and if at any point, so there's, um, we are, this is an informal conversation. And what we're going to do is be watching the um, Facebook comments so if you have any questions in the midst of things then let us know and um, we might not get to it immediately but we'll be going through the live stream comments to uh, to answer any questions or to engage in any sort of general discussion if you want to talk about certain things or have any any um, questions similarly because this is using technology and we never know whether some microphone is going to stop working or the video cuts out or something weird happens if at any time you can't hear either one of us or something seems to not be working the way that it should, just give us a message in the Facebook comments. And I suppose now is a good time to ask to the general, to the world, um, is the audio working? Can you hear Claudia and myself uh, clearly? Does everything seem to be okay for the moment? It's good to get a nice uh, sense that everything is technically working at this point um, before we dive too much into it. Um, so if you can hear us clearly, um, then it would be nice to get just a little thumbs up or a, a message in the comments. Okay, great. That's good to hear. Nice to have a little bit of a, a um, technology check at this point so that we don't spend half an hour talking to a microphone which is turned off. Thank you. Oh, it's great to see everyone engaging as well. Nice to see everyone here. Um, cool. So I'd also like to um, thank Australia Council and uh, Create New South Wales both for supporting this project. Um, Australia Council put in the initial support for the project and Create New South Wales supported some changes that allowed us to um, continue operating in a way that was resilient for uh, for coronavirus lockdown. So we've got a bit of extra equipment. We can do these things like um, uh, effectively working at a, at a distance, um, which has been nice, not necessarily totally critical over the last couple of weeks, but nice to know that we are in a position to continue working. And for anyone, um, for example, John's project a few weeks ago, where it made it much easier for him to work with people who had particular um, reasons to want to remain isolated. It's good to have that ability to work like that. Um, this is one live stream of many. So all of the ones, this will be archived, all of the ones from before are archived on Facebook and also the Tactical Space Lab website. So um, Tactical Space Lab is just tacticalspace.org. I might jump to the website at some point. 
Uh, all of the past videos will be there and anything that we record for the next few projects um, will be Jason Fu, Kylie Banyard and Chidam Ayed Amir, uh, the next three artists, the last three artists and everyone else has been sort of put into it. So now that we've done that um, introduction, I would like to welcome Claudia Nicholson and um, give a bit of an introduction. I'll try and uh, I'll try and do a good job of doing an introduction. I suspect that everyone knows Claudia's practice and is already um, in awe of how great it is. Uh, I would say that um, there, there are particular elements of the practice um, that stuck particularly in my mind, like the, um, the use of uh, creating these big ephemeral murals, colored murals, um, that people dance over the top of the uh, absolutely breathtaking um, uh, works that uh, blew me away. And also um, what we've more focused on for this project is looking at Claudia's watercolor works. Um, and I didn't actually um, tee up uh, your website, Claudia, but I can do it now. So apologies if, if you'd like more information. Claudia's website oh, is um, claudianicholson.com, um, which has links to and images from some of her practice and some of her work. Um, cool. All right. So um, what we will, what we generally do at this point um, is start showing a, the elements of the the VR studio um, which were the sort of final stages of what we came up with so um, I might show the final composited video elements if you're happy with that Claudia yeah, please. Um, I think as a testament to um, we've got a few things to do so some of the work um, that we were developing, uh, what's the best way to introduce this sort of stuff? I suppose is to say that the way that we worked was starting out by exploring a whole bunch of different types of VR experience and the different aesthetics and different ways of using it for sort of linear narrative or for, um, let's see, what sort of, I suppose, um, a combination of things that were more traditional sort of linear st storytelling and more sort of gamey type things and then a few different bits and pieces music videos things like that just a few different ways of using vr and trying to figure out which um which different uses of the vr were most sort of compelling so what we we did do a few tests um to put things in vr um but the final outcomes that we that we're going to show now these little videos are more sort of character um, studies I suppose of looking at a particular aesthetic that you could could um, translate or work with um, the watercolor aesthetic into a sort of CGI um, way of looking at things so I'm just going to play a couple of these videos I'll start with character one and let me turn on the screen. Okay, so, all right. It's going to, for a second, look a little bit weird while I set it up nicely. Okay. So what we've done, Claudia, do you want to talk about where these characters come from while I go through and play a couple of the characters? Yeah, so we wanted to bring to life some of the um, existing characters that are within my um, watercolour paintings that I have at the moment. So the watercolour paintings that I've made are usually based on um, first, like colonial depictions of first contact in the Americas. Um, so there's often these battle scenes that these etchings and lithographs of battle scenes that I'm taking from and then reconfiguring them in a different space and time. Um, in the watercolor artworks um, and create these characters. And a lot of the characters are sort of dressed in my clothes. I guess they're like loosely um, based on self portraiture. Um, yeah, and so I think within the, like the sort of 
two weeks, it was really nice. I wanted to just sort of focus in on bringing just the characters to life mainly um, with the thought that we could bring the landscape in, you know, if this project, if we sort of to continue working together and to extend on this project that we've been working on. Um, so yeah, these characters are based on some paintings that we can show you in a little while. Um, yeah, and I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Josh did a beautiful job with them. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I especially like this one here. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me bring up those those um, paintings if you want. It, I think it's um, the connection will be kind of sort of nicely articulated through. Um, let's see. I'll just bring up the JPEGs. Actually, um, here we go. So, I mean, you can you can very clearly identify where some of these characters come from. Um, from yeah, we particularly looked works. at this painting. Um, which was Go Gently, which was made for um, the exhibition of the Sun at Goulburn, Goulburn Regional Art Gallery last year um, that I made it during a residency. But yeah, the three main characters that we worked on the most are sort of from this little fight scene down below. And then the green haired character with a Salcone jumper is based on the character in the very top left of the painting. Mm. Uh, and we have yeah, we just changed that Oops, a little see. bit. Oops. Let me jump to, um, there's the arches. Where have we got the arches in this scene? Oops, sorry. Are you looking for the painting with the arches in it? Yeah, the one with the, the, um, the um, one with the fire in the hand. I'm not sure we've got that. Fire from the left and the top, I think. They, you'll get some arches. I don't know mm -hmm. if they've got fire in their hands. Um, one, one over, one to the left of the one you're currently clicking on. So everything's gone a little bit nuts. Um, See which one you've got highlighted in your folders here. Oh, um, okay. Let's Either one there. to the. <laughs> okay. We're close. Oh dear. Um, to do a reference. Okay, so. Not that one, that one, that one, that one. Yeah. Um, are you looking for the original pictures or the ones that you've Ah, that's that the made? one. I'm trying to um, to find sort of that riff of the one with the fire in the hand. So unfortunately, we didn't get to the point of, um, of rendering the fire in the hands of the character. Um, but uh, yeah, that third character I think is sort of a amalgam between that archer and a few of the other characters um cool yeah so we've got some archers in this artwork on the right as well mm -hmm. um, um and I suppose so it, if we're talking about VR we have these characters that we've sort of done the character studies of, which is definitely sort of bring it into a 3D, bring it into that sort of computer aesthetic where we've, you know, um, you're working now with a 3D object and all of the same sort of language, the mechanical language and also the visual language of VR. Um, the reason why, so we did start by trying to do kind of more of a, of a direct, recreation of some of the scenarios in these paintings in um, in this software called Unity, which is what I've been using over the last few VR studios to build um, VR experiences. So our final version of that, I suppose, is this one. Should I jump into this one in the VR headset and we can sort of get a feel for that? Yeah, I think mean, that's a good idea. Let's see how this goes. In it. Um, okay, I'm going to move slightly to the left so that um, I don't look like an idiot while I'm in VR. Yeah, okay. So here's. Um, oops. Let me just turn the microphone on. Da, da, da. Okay, so I was just turning, turning my, my audio, audio on, on this, this uh, 
on the headset so you can hear what I'm saying. So this is sort of our final attempt. I think, um, you know, going through the process of um, building these characters um, as articulated 3D characters, which is, you know, just that sort of workflow process that you do if you were making a game or something. Um, it was an interesting... Um, it was definitely an interesting process. Some of the things... <laughs> Uh, were quite frustrating. Like the normal way that you build articulation on characters doesn't really do justice to sort of the way that the clothes fall and things like that. So um, just uh, in terms of the, the examination of trying to recreate these characters, um, it, the reason why we went to those kind of pre-rendered videos at the end was just to really push the envelope of to what extent could we create a really nice aesthetic um, using these tools, but not necessarily in the context of VR where you have a, a heap more limitations. So the limitations of doing things just in this headset, being able to sort of look around, is um, you can't do sort of quite such elaborate um, modeling of certain bits and pieces. Um, and this is... give everyone a sense of the... Um, what we've got here it's like this is one waterfall that was taken from um like a, a watercolor painting from the archive columbian archive library um and we sort of wanted to piece together eventually piece together like various uh watercolor paintings of different places in columbia um and weave them together in in sort of to make one joining landscape so you're just sort of seeing a snippet and if you're in the vr you'd sort of walk around and you'd see all the different aspects of that landscape um all those various landscapes coming together and then the characters sort of within that sort of maquette sky size or scale of the landscape um you'd see them sort of acting out these small repetitive scenes over and over uh, uh, do, do you want, want me to, to jump into because i have the, the I have our, our initial experiments with the characters, but I also have the scene with all of the characters' poses set up, which is gives sort of a sense. Yeah, maybe of all have a little close-up look of the rocks and some of the details that you spent time putting in on those rocks, because I think that's really nice. Oh, have okay. a, yep. Maybe we could have a closer look at the characters. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Sorry, here uh, we are. Oh, um, do you want? So, so on these ones, ones this these, these elements. elements that was, was kind of nice, nice actually. Like, like even though. though um, there's sort of minimal elements that are in VR. It was nice to do a few things like, um, uh, Claudia, uh, was in trying to get all of the poses of the characters, we explored, um, a sort of VR puppetry bit of software where we could pose the characters and work from there and also using um, VR sculpting tools to create some of the shapes and general general um, objects in the scene. We didn't get we didn't quite get to the point where um, where those were brought into the final outcome, but maybe we can show the render of some of the shapes and bits and pieces um, if you want to. Um, it was a nice combination of a few different tools. Look at some of the like the artwork on the wall and like their faces and just a little I guess different angles. Mm -hmm. And, the, and so when you look at this one as well, there's like the sound of a waterfall going, which is quite nice. Yeah. Oh, that looks great. I hadn't done that angle. Oh, what, with, with the, the water, water coming down? down or the character? Just like looking down on bird's eye view on her like that. That's really interesting to see. So um, we were kind of riffing on a sense of, um, of materiality based on a VR experience called Alumet, I suppose, or inspired by... Um, the sort of effects created in this VR experience, Alumet, which is a fairly straightforward story told with these characters who are about this size, a little bit smaller. One of them's a, an adult and one of them's a child, so the child's a little bit smaller. But the thing that, that I like about that, um, that um, I, think, I think we both sort of got excited about was the materiality of the... Um, of, of the, the way, way that it's presented, it doesn't, it doesn't sort of look like super, super um, artificial. It kind of looks like it's got some material reality to it. Um, 
Do you, you want, want to talk, talk a, a little, little bit more about some uh, element? Yeah, yeah it, 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 like, like to, to what extent, extent you enjoyed, enjoyed the aesthetic of yeah. it? I thought it would be effective. Yeah, I thought it would be effective, I guess, also because my paintings are really small scale and I have been like over the last few years trying to work to push them up in scale. But um, I guess the scale of the actual characters and people in my paintings are really small. And when we sort of experimented with scale and when they became larger, they just felt really off. So Alamet just presented this beautiful tiny world that you look into and then these like floating islands and it was just this beautiful crisp little little world that I could imagine um you know lending itself really well if we just had this little world that you can look into and sort of uh explore but rather than yeah it, it felt like it stayed true to the scale of my paintings which is something that I really great about Alumet. um yeah cool um, should, um, should I, I jump, jump through, through to the, because I have the other two, I have our initial sort of exploration of um, the characters, which I think is the next one. Um, yeah. One. It's just loading. <laughs> yeah. So our, our initial little sort of experiment of how we could, uh, that one's all the way over there. Okay, you really get a walkthrough of process with these. Yeah, okay. Things, so, um, which I, love. I probably look like an idiot in the background of it. <laughs> Just gonna turn the video off for myself so you don't see my butt in front of the um, in front of the camera. Okay. So this, yeah. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Is that working? Yeah, it's working. Cool. So on the far left here, you've got this really lanky character and um, I guess that was the figure that we started with. And so a lot of our days were actually spent trying to reconfigure the, um, the actual physicality of the character to better suit um, my character. So um, yeah, that was one of the challenges, I guess, sort of trying to scale the body to be more representative of the bodies that are present in my work, um, which is what you can see to the right is um literally that process and then this so that's the sort of the model once we sort of rearranged it and what program do we use for that josh um so, so the, the second these sort of more more um um sort of an anthropo realistic sort of characters, characters was uh fuse mixamo fuse, fuse which is designed, designed for yeah. creating characters to, to a certain extent, extent. Um, you can sort of customize yeah, different bits. They didn't quite fit right either. So it was a big process of just pushing and pulling um, in fuse with the characters to get the bodies right. And then we've got this hellish character on the <laughs> far right, which I really love. Um, <laughs> our skinny left, this person with her clothes sprayed on on the right that was just sort of stuck in that perpetual anxious movement. Um, and then we've got what we came to on the far far right i guess we've got our first character with the projected and i suppose um you know to a certain extent even though this one is is um kind of caricature and not really a natural human shape um the way that the watercolor sort of went through the body it kind of feels it had a it, it's got something sort of nice about the the application of the watercolor to it and i suppose the extent where even though it doesn't look like a natural person it's sort of stylized in a way which is quite expressive of, the, of um yeah that face we still never quite ca well i mean we're getting closer but capturing the faces of the characters was real um challenge as well so i feel like the one on the left even though it's really distorted you still got sort of her expression was really great and, and the, the reason, reason why, why we have sort of these diamonds here in this um this glass um, heart and a few different bits and pieces and the hyper-reflectivity of these characters it was just exploring some of the things that we could do with that that sort of CGI aesthetic that would work nicely over the top of it. Um, and then finally this bit of clothing here was a test of doing, of kind of baking in the behaviour of the fabric um, just one of the side effects of working in the software that we were using, um, you know, it sort of built quite, quite reasonably for articulating a body where it's got a skeleton inside and you sort of play back 
motion and the body bends in a kind of sometimes it can be a bit messy but sometimes generally it works okay but the clothing just kind of remains totally static so you see here it sort of intersects with itself in certain ways doesn't really behave correctly and um i don't know you could say it was a little bit of a um, it was really fun <laughs> working with this clothing simulation thing. Um, yeah, to get to get sort of a combination of both the the reasonable body motion, but actually having clothing that sort of fell in a in a nice way. Kind of felt like we were getting close to to an interesting sense of physical physicality to the model. Um, and then um, should I? I'd, uh, the, the next, next scene is all of the characters, characters sort of posed. They're not perfect, um, but it might give an indication of just that general idea of having everyone sort of in that space at once. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Cool. I'll just, just sit in the middle of it. So um, this is sort of initial tests of getting a few of the different setups of the characters um, from different scenes in different paintings. Um, yeah, yeah, with, with the, the caveat, caveat that the, the um, some, some of them are not sort of perfectly recreating the intent or the gestures of some of the characters, but sort of um, just spatially. Do you want to slow up. down and have a look at each one, sort of one by one? Yep, yep sure. sure. So, so this, this is, is the one, one that we this, uh, kind of eventually ended up doing a bit more of a focus on. And and then I love this one as well. If there's an angle you want me to stand at, I think um. Um. And so one of our sort of, pretty, like, uh, where we would like to take the work is that um, when you're in the VR, at some point the archers would move and face you to be pointing their weapons at you, and then they'd sort of face back to. Um, this other person here. Um, yeah, so and same with the people wielding the big swords and the knives and the, um, I don't know what we call that big stabby thing, but they would turn mm -hmm. to sort of turn their attention on the viewer as you experience the VR. So that's something we would like to have happen. Um, yeah, and these, in these, this, the original work, these girls are holding ham hocks and sort of using them as weapons as well. Um, and this so, one, yeah, yeah I'm sorry, this, the pose of this one isn't quite perfect. Um, and I'm sorry, I think I'm about to head up the screen. <laughs> Try to look at it. So this bat character holding a sword, um, that is the one of the works that we've either maybe already showed you or are going to show you with the green hair. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the third, third character. character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's one of the character studies we've done. Um, and, and that's, that's the third, third character. character. It's, it's funny, funny, like, some, some things are very easy to do with this, so... Um, some, some of the articulation, some of the, you know, getting, getting characters to hold things and animating them in certain ways. Um, you, you know, the, I, I, I mean, this is kind of something that we were, we were talking about a little bit with what a, norm, what a standard body is or a standard thing in a, in a game development context. It's very easy to make games that have certain elements in them that are reproduced across thousands of different games. But then, but then when you try and do things a little bit different, different it starts to get much, much harder. Um, so obviously like an archer is something that there's, it's, it's pretty easy to find a little bow and arrow that's all animated and ready for you to use. Um, and a little bit harder to find characters that, um, that look a, a particular way, I suppose. Yeah, that's, oh. we were looking for characters that, I guess, fit the characters that are loosely based on me <laughs> so it's like a loose self-portrait and it was I guess that was one of the challenges the sort of classic Eurocentric um, body type that was available extensively and sort of working having to start with that as a starting point to work back from something else which just took us quite a lot of time actually 
Um, but I think we did pretty well in the end. Cool. Um, I'm gonna, gonna jump, jump out. out. And put the audio back on. Sweet. I'm just gonna check to see if there's any questions that people are asking. Ooh. Okay. There are. Let's see if people have been talking about things. <laughs> Can, is there a way for me to see that, Josh? Or? Um, it's on the face. It's um, I'll send you via Facebook the link to it. That would work. Head over. Um, there you go. So you can see the feed from there and also the comments. Um, someone said I kind of like the effect, actually, Simon Doby, but um, I don't know what they were talking about. So thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, oh, um, apologies for the audio echo when I was in the VR. I hope it wasn't too horrible um, or distracting. Oh no. Okay. So I kind of get into the. Oh, wait, maybe I can come through here. That link wasn't quite working for me, but I think oh. uh, Louise just tagged me something. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, oh, and I can hear myself. So in that. I'm in. Cool. Oh, um, apologies for the. <laughs> Thank you. Is that better? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry about the echoes. Um, I was, I had my head in a VR and hopefully you could tell what was going on with me talking. Um, so Louise okay. asked me what it's like to see my work translated in this way. Um, it was really exciting to see it translated. I think, um, especially the sort of time that Josh took to get, um, certain as aesthetic aspects, right. Which I was really happy to see. Um, see that follow through and come to life. Um, I'm really excited, I guess, to see when I, when I see these little characters, like the potential of the work um, and how I can imagine the work will would be if we were, you know, given a serious amount of time to dedicate to it. Um, especially, sort of, we hadn't quite reached how to like engage with the characters in like a subtle way so it would be exciting to see that extra step I guess um but yeah I'd never used VR before so it was a very um exciting learning curve for me and I think it, it was really exciting to see the paintings in this form and I guess sometimes when I'm painting I try and like strive or achieve something um aesthetically or like and, and sometimes I don't quite get there which is half the fun of making the paintings in the first place so it's exciting to be able to be in a virtual space where you could um achieve certain things I guess like some CGI aesthetics I just don't have the skills to paint so it was really exciting to just be able to plop them in there um and I guess sort of the movement which is it was really nice to see them animated oh, and here's my favorite one up now the <laughs> archer with the green hair yeah, I do like the same jumper as today. <laughs> um, on one of the days that Claudia was here um, to work on on things, and um, part of the process involved painting sort of templates out of um, of sections of the character that we would then apply to to the character. It's a little bit like when you um, you take a 2D image and then sort of fold it around the characters. And Claudia was wearing all of the same outfit as the character that we were doing that was funny <laughs> accidentally. So we had all the reference clothing ready to go to check everything. I guess that was actually quite an important like um, technical part of the process was making, I guess, if you imagine the net of a shape. Um, we were, I would have to recreate my paintings with a net shape so the each item of clothing or each logo um, and I redid a lot of faces in the work and did like color swatches so it was for me it was really good because um, I'm very comfortable in sort of a painting uh, environment so it was good to be able to like go away and be given homework from Josh <laughs> to sort of recreate different aspects each day and scan them in and, or bring them to the workshop um, and then they were translated digitally because the paintings were just too small 
or not at the right angle, I guess, to translate into VR. So yeah, up here on the screen, you can see some of the faces um, and the hair colors that were there. Uh, maybe I can, so, yeah. it was a funny process of um, as well trying to get the expressions. I could bring up Substance Painter as well to show those sort of subtle shifts of of the expression. Would that be? Yeah. Okay. Um, so a whole bunch of different tools that we're using, and one of them was um, where you take an image and you can sort of just paint it over the top of a particular shape. So we had a character model, which is the one if you've been if you've seen the Instagram photos of doing the clothing simulation, there is a sort of um, the character which is is placed there doesn't have a texture applied to it. Um, let me find, so for example, this one. And then we just paint the character and the face over the top of that, that sort of predefined yeah. template. Um, but it's, you know, I'm not, I don't paint faces at all. I don't do any of that sort of representational stuff to that degree. Um, so it was an interesting process. It's very, very subtle differences in the positioning of the eyes and the eyebrows and the you know slight angle for everything that massively changed the expression of the characters. And um, yeah, it was. It, I think it was pretty much impossible to get back to. It, every time you do anything, it looks like a slightly different different face. So this is our favorite one. Let me just move it across. Yeah, I don't know why I like her so much. I think it was like, I think she was done quickly or something. Um, and I really liked her expression. So she's, she, which character did she end up on, Josh? This one, well, I used the redo of this one for Halbert, for the stabby character. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you can get a sense with these pictures, the process of from the painting to the character. Um, yeah. So there you go. I, I can go through all of the faces that we have sort of set up. So this is like face four, eyes closed. Oops. Um, that one is quite good. And I suppose it also speaks to part of the process, which is um, once you get a few of the bits and pieces, once you've sort of figured out the best way to do X, Y, Z, it does get much easier to do the, 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 like everything else becomes a little bit quicker. So once we'd gone, okay, what we need to do is have these images and these, um, uh, yeah, once we have faces scanned, then we can paint them onto the characters and da, da, da. But before you sort of get the character shape and everything done, it's just a little bit of a nightmare because everything always changes and you have to keep on redoing things. So that's quite good as well. I do do like there's a really I love that one. yeah, and um, I think it always looks that um, the sort of expressivity of a hand drawn or hand painted style in. Um, in VR or in that game aesthetic always I think looks pretty special because it's sort of bringing something which is totally missing normally from that form of representation if that makes sense it's like everything can be really really clean cut um, but you can't really there's no substitute for just like those very very subtle little elements of something that just show that it was sort of handmade um, and that just introduce a lot extra into it um cool i think someone ooh, um i've got a few more questions dylan was asking does the body articulation based on a maquette or is it custom to the model um that's a bit of a technical question i can answer quite quickly so the characters that we have um there's a few ways of articulating them. One of them is to just get motion capture that someone else has recorded and applying to it. Um, but the other way is using, either you can just grab the bone structure and sort of move the bones around and the character will move according to that. Or you can do something called an IK system, 
Um, I will show it. It's quite cute, actually. So if I take the, um, if I take um, this halberd wielding character, and I, I just turn off the animation on the halberd, then I can sort of grab it and move it around myself. Where is it? Character and prop. Okay. I'm just going to turn off that animation so it stops moving and I'll rotate the whole character so we can see what they're doing. So in this one, I've just said, okay, I want this character to try and reach over to two points in the halberd and then we can grab it and just go nick, nick, nick and the character will just sort of, oops, notwithstanding like looking a bit nuts, but try and sort of reach a position where they're holding that halberd in a particular way. So there's a few, <laughs> also a little bit of weird artifacts on the on the um, skeleton with that one. But there's a few ways that you can do it that save you time, um, where you, like for the feet, I think I'm just saying that I want that foot to be there, and then I can grab it and go like, duh, 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 do a high kick, that sort of thing. And I guess like when I'm trying to figure out how to draw the poses in my paintings, I often have like a series of really awkward photographs of me trying to physically pose in the same positions. And it was good. One day I had Josh and I over like over Zoom trying to physically um, stay in, like get into the positions that the characters were in to see how we could make them move in a more realistic way. So for me, it was good that the process kept sort of circling back to um, the way that I would normally make work as well. So it felt good as well. Hmm. Um, how uh, clue to Cordy Nicholson, the behind the scenes stuff is what I'm drooling over. How did you find the process like working from 2D color, watercolor and adapting to 3D VR in the sense of, I guess, I guess skills sharing with Josh and vice versa, very different. Uh, sorry, I can't read. Yeah. I guess okay. <laughs> you can read. Them. Um, um, yeah. I mean, I found the process uh, quite difficult to change from 2D to 3D. Uh, and I guess that like let Josh really guide that process, um, which is, I guess, what I was talking about just before, sort of like, I think I felt most comfortable when it was brought back to um, when I could bring in my skills with painting and drawing when it was like, okay, you, I can do nets and I can do swabs of patterns and um, tones and different colors. And so once that homework, that's when I really got into it to see that then really quickly translated into 3D um, through the programs that Josh used. I don't know. Does that answer the question? Like it was really exciting to see it. Um, and I think there's still so much potential in the work. Like, I guess you've, like, the, I can't wait to see the watercolour and the atmosphere that can be uh, created in VR and 3D and um, brought into the paint, into these worlds. I'm really excited for that. Um, I, I, I am glad that we got the chance to do these. It feels almost cheating, I suppose to do these rendered videos in a different bit of software. But I think it was um, sort of a, a proving, because when we were setting up those characters and initially we had all of the poses, um, mm. and I just I felt at that point that it was important to try and take those three characters in that first scene that's in the final the, with, around the waterfall, just try and go through and tick off all of the things on the list that I knew were necessary for, you know, put this thing here, get this material for this bit, get this material for this bit. Um, just to be able to say, okay, this, you know, in that sort of experimental context where we're trying all different things, to be able to say, um, at some point it might be important that you know that the it will work, that the aesthetic will work, that there won't be some niggling mm. thing like, you know, the intersection of the cloth to the body is really tough for me because it's um, it just breaks that sense of real world materiality and it's something that's that happens all the time um, in that context. Yeah, it just sort I of, guess I'm the yeah. same. I guess that's why I was also not, I didn't want to push the um, getting the landscape, I guess, finished or like, 
that far ahead because I sort of wanted to acknowledge that it was a two week working space that if we achieved the characters that was actually a whole heap of work and I was really excited to get to that place rather than rush through and have um sort of two parts that we weren't entirely happy with to just sort of get those characters right was um really really exciting for me cool um and I really enjoyed I can't fully express how how fun it is to take your watercolor um sections and put them onto different items of clothing and simulate them as if they're moving around <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Yeah, I'm really keen to get, I feel like that happened later in the second week. I'd be keen to get into that um, clothing program that you were using as well and have a play. That sounded really up my alley. So that was the program that you could design, like I guess the patterns of the clothes and then the thickness and all that of the fabric, which looked really great. Yeah, that was fun. Um, should we talk a little bit about, I'll go through my, um, my list. Okay. So... We've just got a couple more minutes, so yeah, whatever you... Mm. Um, and if got anyone's left. got any sort of questions. Uh, Simon, thank yeah. you for your offer. That's very kind. Um, we might chat after this. Um, just around the idea of the potential for VR for place for placemaking or exploring atmosphere, that sort of thing. Um, we did talk a little bit about that in the sort of pre, pre-discussion. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm sort of thinking about a project I'm doing at UTP at the end of this year called Dream Sequence. So I sort of started to think about, during ISO, I started to think about dreams a lot, I think, me and everyone else. Um, and I started to keep a dream diary and that's sort of, for me, like a reoccurring uh, pattern in my dreams is that places like stitch together in this sort of like familiar unfamiliar landscapes and so sometimes it can be years between dreams where like I remember a place that I've been in a previous dream and it's this sort of like pattern and network of places that I'm I am trying to sort of stitch together so very loosely like I kind of had that in mind um thinking about dreams had that in mind when we started the project and I guess like the idea of uh, you know I'm, I'm recreating landscapes in my paintings they're not fictional places they they're real places but I'm sort of recreating them um, and reconfiguring them and so the idea of bringing those landscapes together in that similar sort of stitching way is what VR really offered offered us I think in this, for this project mm. um, yeah I mean it's it, I'd, I'd say there's um you know, there are a lot of people talking about VR as some way of, um, and I've said this to, we've, we've talked about this um, before, but VR is this sort of attempt at, um, at simulating or like reproducing or capturing like a tourist experience where you're, for example, there's people who go out with 360 cameras who go to exotic parts of the world and they say, this is great everyone that I meet will gives me a new sense of the culture that they're terrible, terrible people anyway. And this idea that by sticking a 360 camera in some part of the world and allowing other people to be there in VR, that that's in any way as an experience of the, of anything meaningful about that place. Right. And I think the one element of VR is this kind of utopian kind of horrible techno utopian idea that you can reduce something down to something which is the equivalent that does the job, but there's also the potential mm -hmm. for much more sort of expressive and poetic uses of it. Um, that's yeah, that you can do some interesting things. And from my experience of place in, um, there's not there's not very many good computer games out there, but um, what there are tend to be focused around the idea of the creation of atmosphere in a fictional fictional space um and when it's done well it's like good theater um or good storytelling you know where you don't really need anything other than just the sound of the voice and your imagination to get a, a feel for something being brought together but i think that potential is there in vr as well i'm sorry if i just went slightly left field on that um yeah i think there is some 
some potential. I guess back to what you said at the beginning of that comment, I think like one of my most exciting experiences with VR in that first week where we sort of undertook different experiences was the one that was sort of like Google Maps where you could go anywhere. Mm. Um, I found that really informative and inspiring for this project to sort of go to different places that I'd been or places that I'd want to be. I want to go sort of within Central and South America and Colombia in particular and to sort of like get a sense of those places where I, some places I haven't been before um, that have been too difficult to get to or the wrong timing or whatever and then other places I had been and sort of revisiting them in that sort of like a, like a memory and so I thought that those experiences I know they're not like equivalent to actually going to those places but especially in you know the current COVID climate I thought it was pretty amazing to get that close to them um, and I wanted to sort of bring that into the work eventually as well. Yeah, I'm, I've used Google Street View in the past for sort of going back to places that I used to live and it's kind of haunting actually. It's it's enough mm. of a experience of this of the space. Um, so this bit of software Wonder that is effectively Google Street View but in the VR headset so you can look around and see you're sort of in within kind of feels like being present in certain sites. Yeah, it's true that you can I suppose my my general resistance um to the idea that you could I it's just a general thing of like capture um distill reduce an experience down into something without for example like um the idea that a 3D 3D photogrammetry like a 3D reconstruction of some heritage site would be good enough that you that the you don't really need to worry about the um, original sort of existing because everyone has that sort of you know shadow of the of the original that they can go and visit um, yeah it's part of my sort of curmudgeonly grumpiness uh, that that's that general idea coming from computer science as well because like the computer science mentality is generally we will capture and digitize everything job done like we have total control over this sort of stuff um, which is why I'm, I'm much rather uh, focus on that sort of like a poetic way of looking at things than that the theatrical and the atmospheric anyway you're probably <laughs> sorry for that gone on a mini rant um cool well we are getting to the end of our time um thank you everyone for joining us there's uh if you have any final last minute sort of questions and comments now is the time to um to ask them yeah, would like thank to... you to everyone who is watching yeah um, and thanks for all the questions so far it's really nice um, Peter Nelson says, we'd love to see a particle simulation of your Sawdust Works. That would be very easy to we do. Sorry? We did, discuss, we did discuss that early on, bringing those in mm. at some point as well. Um, yeah. Oh, I've lost the comments and now I'm just in a oh. up next thing. <laughs> All right, here I am. And then could you see yourself going into the games as art genre? Maybe that's for Josh, because personally, probably not. Um, um, I imagine that. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't make a claim over what these are. I think um, you know, it's a tech, it's a representational technology like any other representational technology, and it doesn't have to be a game to be art in that sense. It's um, one of the reasons why I think it's important to engage with technology. Um, in art making is because it's part of a sort of vernacular ex everyday experience of the world is having everything mediated through one technology or another um, and I think artists are in a good position to interrogate and critique the ways in which technology makes sense of the world um, and VR like it's important to have there's a couple of really strong sort of industries that have got their their fingers in um, 
the growing VR um, world, and that's like games and film, and neither of them are really pushing the envelope of how you can use, of what comes along with VR. Um, they're just sort of trying to extend their own industries into into that world. Um, so as well, I think VR is getting artists involved in VR is another way of sort of making it a little bit more um, fertile ground for using it in interesting ways. Cool. All right. Um, cool. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Claudia. And thank you for bringing those paintings to life. I'm really happy with where they ended up and I'm, huh. it's really incredible to see them in that space. I'm really tough. So um, yeah, no worries. It, it always does feel a little bit like magic to um, to to do yeah. these collaborative projects. Something pops up. Like there's these three three people who are standing there right now, waving their weapons around. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Forever um, in that small pose. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Josh.